Hi, my name is Christina Heron, and I'm the Government Relations Manager of Health Policy at the Heartland Institute. And today I'm interviewing Sarah Anderson, Director of Policy at FreedomWorks, to discuss COVID-19 truths and other national health care issues. So Sarah, thanks so much for taking time to talk with me today. Christina, so glad to be with you. Yeah, um, I just want to start off. There's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to talk about. Um, we probably don't have time to hit everything, but just some of the main things. Um, obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic has been something um, FreedomWorks and the whole world has been engaged on over the past mm -hmm. year, you know, plus several months. And um, we're starting to kind of peel back some of the layers here and find out more, um, you know, truths about the COVID-19 origin and um, things like that. And so I know that FreedomWorks has engaged a little bit. And just for those out there, um, there are recent emails, I'm sure many of you who are listening have paid attention to in the news where um, Dr. Fauci's emails have been FOIA'd and those have um, you know, been made public and shed a lot of light on some of these misconceptions that um, you know, were discussed previously about the COVID-19 um, origin and if um, you know this lab leak theory, I think it was you know referred to as a conspiracy theory, may not be um, such a conspiracy anymore. But um, what what do you all think or thoughts um, on any recent legislation in the Senate or House or any um, you know recent updates with the status of the COVID nineteen origin in this entire um, you know investigational process we will have to go through in the future because as of now. Um, it seems mm -hmm. as though no one knows the real true origin of the virus. And I think that the American people and the world deserve to know the truth after what we've been put through over the last year. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Christina, I mean, this whole thing started right with the idea of 14 days to flatten the curve of COVID-19 and then we're going to be back to normal. Of course, now it is June. So we're looking at what, a year and three months later that a lot right. of states are still on lockdown. People are still working from home. And not only that, but now there is so much misinformation about masks and vaccines and natural immunity yes. that the people do deserve answers. You're 100% right. Of course, we know at the beginning of COVID, Dr. Fauci and others at the CDC and NIH um, were conflicted on the efficacy of masks. They went back and forth on whether you should or should not wear them. Maybe they make it worse. Maybe they make it better. Um, Maybe now we're seeing. Free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And now we're seeing emails from Dr. Fauci that contradict everything he's been publicly saying for the past year, both on the origins of the virus from the lab in Wuhan, as well as on the efficacy of masks. You know, one email he sent specifically said, you know, these, they're not effective in preventing uh, the spread of the disease. And then, of course, talking about the natural immunity question of COVID-19 that our good friend, Representative Thomas Massey, has been talking about for the past year, is that how do we not know at this point or not know at this point whether natural immunity, how long it lasts. They say, oh, we don't know if it lasts longer than three months after you've had the virus. Um, and now there are places that are trying to mandate vaccine passports, whereas we know that people at this point who have had the virus likely have longstanding natural immunity and don't need the virus at all, and it would be a waste to give it to them. So there's so much misinformation, even a year and a half or so in, that's going to have to be unpacked. Yeah, for sure. And I know um, in Congress, um, there y'all are in Washington, DC. So mm -hmm. totally embedded in the swamp right now. But I know, like you said, Senator Paul, um, Representative Massey, um, Senator Joni Ernst have been mm -hmm. very adamant at wanting an investigation, have been very skeptical of China and what, you know, data and information yeah. China has released, which has been very little, right? It's taken them so long to give any information if it's true or not. And, um, you know, have really pushed, um, for you know some truth on the matter and i know senator paul recently just introduced an mm -hmm. amendment that would um not allow u.s tax dollars to go to more gain of function research um in china which is possibly mm -hmm. you know the type of research that um you know u.s the u.s taxpayers have been paying for for years now and could actually be the origin of this virus so um do you have any other thoughts on any legislation that's going through and i know thomas massey just mm -hmm. introduced or um Representative Massey just introduced legislation that would um, not allow armed service workers to be forced to get the vaccine. So like you're saying, there's a lot of push. Um, it seems almost like a control, a control grab, which we, a power grab, which we've seen a lot of mm -hmm. um, you know, political 
leaders, you know, choose to do and whether the outcome, like you said, we don't even know at this point um, about antibodies or, you know, immunity in terms of that. And I know there is research um, in Ohio potentially and some other research that has been, you know, contradicting. So I just mm-hmm. think there's so much up in the air and we don't seem to know anything, but it's not limiting, you know, politicians from making decisions for us about our health care. So um, is there anything yeah. in Congress going on or that um, FreedomWorks has been involved with? Yeah, I think you're, you're right to talk about Senator Paul. He's obviously a doctor as much as the left hates to admit that. Um, but the left are the ones I think who really don't want us to know the answers and the full scope of what actually happened with COVID-19, because like you're saying, it undermines the power grab that they've been enjoying for the past year. Um, And as governors running rampant over constitutional rights of Americans with very little to no checks from their legislatures or from their constituents. Thankfully, up in Pennsylvania, we saw the voters actually pass a ballot measure to limit Governor Wolf's authority um, under emergency powers. And I hope to see that across more states. But in Washington, D.C., in the swamp, you're right, Senator Paul introduced amendments to uh, block funding to go to gain of function research, um, specifically in China, which, of course, um, if they did an investigation, could potentially reveal what even Dr. Fauci was saying is possibly true, that it was a man-made virus. Um, and that, that caused a lot of problems for the left in terms of just general government funding for things. And that's what FreedomWorks was engaged on a couple of weeks ago with the passage of what was originally called the Endless Frontier Act. It was, I think, 1247. Um, it was a, a large spending bill, about $750 billion, that was aimed at um, making America more competitive in terms of technology with regard to China so we can become less dependent on China. But of course, you and I would know, talking about the debt, that there's uh, so much of our debt is borrowed from China itself. And I don't see how it makes any sense for us to beat China by borrowing from the very country we're supposedly trying to beat. And then furthermore, in uh, meddling into the private sector, into research and development that is better done in the private level, um, especially because we see time and time again, just the misuse of funds when they're allocated from the federal government to private industry, even if they go through competitive contracts, even if there's oversight for national security measures and whatnot, there's really no way of saying where the money is going to funnel down through the federal bureaucracy. Um, And you get things like you just have to turn on the Senate floor to watch uh, Senator Paul rail time and time again about the gross misuse of research dollars. Um, And the last thing we want is the gross misuse of research dollars to create another global pandemic through something like gain of function research. So that bill we opposed, there was a pretty uh, robust Republican opposition to the bill, fortunately, both on the grounds of the fact that it uh, is not targeted, would not do what it claims to do, and then also the national debt. So Uh, Many, many efforts just on the specific funding side of it, Um, but government funding of private sector initiatives generally is something we're very, very skeptical of, certainly when it comes to such sensitive matters as healthcare. Yeah, well, I think that's awesome. And, you know, I always look to FreedomWorks to fight the good fight and always, um, you know, am really impressed with the grassroots activism that you all have, which keeping, you know, the general electorate Mm -hmm. engaged into this, because a lot of us have our own lives and have kids and family and jobs and things to do that we always can't be 100% embedded on what's going on. And that's, I think, again, part of the problem. We have this huge overarching government and we have no idea where funding is going. And according to Mm -hmm. our, you know, leaders, these unelected bureaucrats, they, you know, are on trial and don't even know supposedly where our, you know, tax dollars are going or have, you know, some misinterpretations of that. And that's kind of where we've come to with this, um, you know, Wuhan lab conspiracy theory is, um, you know, it's actually been proven that dollars have been spent there. And, um, you know, we kind of need to find out if, you know, that is a dangerous and possibly the origin of the COVID-19 vaccine or COVID-19 virus before we continue to fund more research um, in labs like that. So um, I think it's really important that y'all are um, on, you know, the right side of this fiscal argument. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to go back to um, like the monetary aspects of all of this spending that's being pushed by this administration and um, this new COVID-19 stimulus that has rolled out. And I have a feeling we're going to see more and more COVID stimuluses and, um, you know, we can't get people into jobs because they're all on unemployment benefits and these are being rolled out. Um, But do you have any thoughts on, you know, the recent rollout of um, the most recent COVID-19 stimulus package. And I know um, on our end, we're fighting a lot of 
um, the Medicaid expansion proposals mm -hmm. that have been pushed towards the states. But is there anything, um, you know, regarding that, that, um, you know, spending bill that, that you guys have thoughts on? Yeah, I mean, since midway through last year, you know, if not since the very beginning, uh, FreedomWorks opposed one of the very first COVID-19 stimulus packages and uh, encouraged, you know, that it be paid for. There was an amendment offered, I think, by Senator Paul, no surprise there, um, to just pay for the spending. And that's really all that we're asking for at that point. And then about halfway through the year, it became very clear that throwing more money at a problem even if it's paid for is not the way to solve it. And A, that fortunately and, and thankfully, the COVID problem was not as big of an issue as they maybe thought it was. You know, you watch a movie like right. Contagion and every other person is dying when they contract the virus. Thankfully, right. we know that COVID has a 99 plus percent survival rate. Um, and that if, as long as we're protecting the vulnerable populations, we're effectively totally fine. And so it quickly became absolutely no more spending. And that's where we've been since uh, very quickly midway through last year, I'd say maybe about three months into the pandemic, it was, you know, cut this out. People need to go back to work. We can figure out ways to open up safely, especially when so many people are employed by small businesses that we know are some of the most innovative people in our country who are going to be able to keep their businesses surviving because, you know, of course, they're able to compete with larger companies, with teams of lawyers, um, and they certainly are capable of figuring out how to keep their businesses open and keep their customers feeling safe. And so at this point, now that we're a year and a half ish into this pandemic, I mean, it's just absurd to try to propose more spending, more unemployment benefits. We saw the jobs report that came out from the Biden administration's uh, from the plans that they've implemented, yeah. absolutely abysmal. Uh, job growth just barely keeping up with population growth at a time when a million jobs were expected to be um, added that month. You know, that's a direct testament to the horrible, horrible policies we've seen in the past COVID packages that are paying people more money to stay at home than they would get if they go back right. to work. Um, fortunately, there's some states across the country who are starting to say, you know, this is really wrecking our economy. We can't get employees. We're going to turn down the boosted unemployment benefits from the federal government. And I think that's a really right. smart move, um, especially when the, the dollars put through in the last COVID package um, that the Democrats passed on partisan lines, the American Rescue Plan, um, prevented states who took dollars from that package from lowering their state taxes. Um, you know, that type of control and strings attached mechanism. I mean, you brought up Medicaid. It's something we've seen over and over again, of course, with the effort in Obamacare to force states to expand Medicaid. Um, it's just a continuation of those types of policies and it's got to stop. I think the American people are, are seeing through it at this point when there's stimulus checks, right. not that stimulus checks are actually effective at boosting consumption or do what they're intended to do, but the American people, they're popular with the American people and, and those aren't even in the discussions anymore, right? It's continued unemployment benefits, it's continued blue state bailouts that result in a right. $30 billion plus dollar surplus for the state of California um, and other things that are completely unrelated to COVID entirely. And so I think the American people are catching on and they're so done with this. Um, and it's really time to, to, like the left would say, follow the science. Of course, now that the CDC is saying you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated, the people who are wanting to keep wearing masks, they say, oh, well, I'm going to do it, you know, to send a signal and make sure everybody stays safe. And it's like, hey, 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 I thought you were following the CDC. I thought you were following right. Dr. Fauci. Now that the narrative has changed, they've uh, shown their true colors. Yeah, I just think it's just so powerful when you look at the legislation that's being promoted and mm -hmm. and, and you see you see businesses in my community here. I mean, we have new businesses that are trying to be become established, which is incredible during, you know, mm -hmm. this time, but it really is, is, is incredible that they can't get employees. Then they're writing to our local papers that they can't get people to come to work because it's yeah. easier. I mean, why, I mean, people aren't stupid. It's easier to just get on, you know, get on government programs that are going to pay you to stay home and not go to work. So I just think, you know, the, the, the policy should be judged on, you know, the end result and the end result is disastrous. And it's just mm -hmm. crazy to me that people, like you said, people are seeing through and I really hope that's true. And I really hope that they're seeing that this is a step to socialism. If we can get everyone dependent on the government, mm -hmm. if we can get everyone, you know, who has a child, we'll pay them $3,100 or $3,600 <laughs> to have a child, you know, that's just one step closer to socialism. We're going to get mm -hmm. to, you know, universal basic income and universal housing. And it's just one step closer. And that's the same thing we're seeing with Medicaid expansion. Mm -hmm. You know, Wisconsin 
um, just shut down Medicaid expansion. Republicans mm-hmm. just shut it down in their state. Um, you know, the governor was adamant on, you know, expanding Medicaid and taking dollars from the federal government to boost mm-hmm. their state budgets. And in in the policy, it, the federal government would only guarantee payment for two years. So you're going to get it would have allowed 91,000 people to get off of, you know, private private sector insurance and move on to this, you know, Badger mm-hmm. Care Plus, which is this government subsidized program. And it only would have been funded for two years. And then everyone magically is going to, you know, cry because there's no more funding. And then who's going to be left to pay for it? it's going to be the taxpayers. And then, you know, the private sector insurance is going to, you know, collapse in some capacity once you get so many people off of it. And it's just mind boggling to me as well as my last, I'll get out my soapbox here, but <laughs> for example, they don't have, you know, a gap where you, they have um, options for low income. People can get onto Obamacare in the States. You don't need to expand Medicaid. There's no need for it. There's no gap um, for care. Mm-hmm. There. And so um, I think the argument from the left is that there's this huge gap and there's not. Most people are covered and they have options to get covered under, you know, Obamacare in the state already. So it's just, it's just one step towards socialism and we're seeing it in all sectors in every industry. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing it be shoved, you know, down our throats through a COVID stimulus package. So I think it's awesome that Freedom Works and your activists are so engaged and, you know, willing to call their legislature legislators and, you know, um, speak speak their minds and their voices because that's just so important. And I guess the last question I have, I know you mm-hmm. mentioned um, vaccine mandates and. Mm-hmm. Um, things like that. But do you have any other thoughts on just, you know, vaccine mandates? And we are seeing more research come out. And I think we're going to continue to see more research come out regarding, you know, antibodies and immunity and, you know, herd immunity and these things mm-hmm. like you mentioned that um, some of these skeptics in Congress, like um, Senator Paul and Representative Massey have been kind of um, questioning the whole time. And now it's starting to become more mainstream. We're seeing, you know, articles in the New York Times about about these topics. So I just I just wonder if you have any other final thoughts on, you know, vaccine mandates and, you know, hopefully we aren't going to force, you know, school aged children mm-hmm. or people to get them yeah. under your choice with your bodily autonomy to choose if you get a vaccine or not. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, there's sort of two aspects to this, right, is what is the federal government's role in this versus what is the state and local government's role in this? Um, of course, you know, as free market believers, um, if, a, if a business wants to require somebody to have a vaccine to come to their event or, or go wherever they're going or do whatever they're doing, um, that is certainly within their right. I would tend to disagree with it because I, of course, think there's uh, ways that people are immune to COVID that go beyond the vaccine, namely uh, having had the virus in the past. Um, but of course, you know, that is their right to do that. There are a number of states who have banned um, their governments from implementing COVID vaccine uh, passports. That's Arizona, yeah. Georgia, Idaho's done it, um, Indiana, South Carolina, I believe. Um, and then there's a couple of states who have banned their governments from giving out COVID passports and also banned private industry from uh, requiring them. Um, I believe Florida did it that way, Alabama, Iowa, Montana, a couple others. Um, but then, of course, on the flip side of that, there are the states that have actually implemented some sort of vaccine passport. Um, and that is Hawaii and New York. So New York, surprising no one, Governor Cuomo, who has done an absolutely terrible job throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, um, having been the media's darling at the beginning of it. And then of course, yeah. recently his his brother on CNN who had no problem covering him at the beginning of the pandemic, now saying it would be unfair of him to, to cover his brother, uh, seeing that it's his brother. Um, of course, that's simply just a political calculation based on the unpopularity of Governor Cuomo. Um, But some of these states that, I mean, at the end of the day, requiring a vaccine passport to live everyday life is terrifying, right? Having a, New York wanted to do it with a QR code on your phone, right? Having the government scan you to tell you what you can and can't do. That's truly something out of a dystopian novel or something you see on Black Mirror. Um, And it's terrifying, right? People should have the ability to make the decisions that they want to keep themselves safe. Um, John Tamney, who's our Senator for the Economic Freedom Director at FreedomWorks, recently put out a book, a new book called When Politicians Panicked, breaking down just why the government's entire response to COVID was completely inappropriate and actually harmful. And my favorite line from his book um, is that people, he says, people do not need a law to protect them against what might kill them. 
And I think that's at the end of the day, the market is is what's able to determine just how lethal or how much of a threat COVID-19 is. And again, like I said, thankfully, it's not nearly as bad as it could have been. Um, And people certainly don't need a law to protect themselves from something that might kill them exactly like he says. And so giving people the ability, of course, whether it is with the vaccine or with uh, the, the virus itself, Um, Letting people be people is what allows us to gather information about how problematic a virus may be or how how deep of a pandemic we may or may not be in. Uh, With the power grabs that we saw there, of course, we're unable to even find that out. So the the vaccine passport question is no different at the federal level. Like you said, Representative Massey introduced a bill to uh, prevent federal funding for the creation of vaccine passports for the armed services to require um, our members of the military to get a vaccine. There's certainly a role that the federal government can play in saying no funding to create a national vaccine passport system. But as federalism would have it, of course, states can decide amongst themselves what their appropriate uh, protocol is. But I think there are constitutional grounds certainly to challenge a vaccine passport system or mandate. Um, And so hopefully more states will start to or continue to ban them at least from the government level saying no, you know, state governments or local governments um, can issue these or require them to go certain places and do certain things. Um, Because at the end of the day, we want people and things to move freely. And that's the way we believe it's best. Yeah, I think that's phenomenal. And I think um, John Tammy's book, I hadn't heard of that, but I'm definitely going to check it out. I just think it's so important um, from a philosophical perspective too to question mm-hmm. these things. I don't know, um, even getting off of the you know political side of it, just philosophically, um, mm-hmm. you know, where you align with like bodily autonomy and individualism. I think it's yeah. just wild that there are people going about their day and actually, you know, supporters of the policy that forces, um, you know, allows the government to force force, you know, the hands of our health care. And I just think right. that that is, you know, wild to me. I, I would never want to force anyone else to do something with their body. And so I'm just shocked that, um, you know, so yeah. many people have gone on the bandwagon that way. But I think, again, there's obviously people on the other side of the spectrum who are totally against it. And I'm just glad that you all are, you know, questioning these things and um, your grassroots, you know, activists are as well. Um, do you have any other final thoughts on anything upcoming or um, anything that Freedom Works is working on? I know you mentioned John Tammy's book, which is incredible. Um, but any yeah. other final thoughts just on COVID or, um, you know, anything that y'all are doing? Yeah, well, so I mentioned John Tamney's book that just got released. Um, our president, Adam Brandon, actually just released a new book today or yesterday. Um, so you can find that also on FreedomWorks website, which is freedomworks.org. Um, it's called A Republic, Not a Democracy, which is uh, certainly telling when the left continues to talk about democracy. And we know about the threat of, of mob rule and when you can get uh, it's similar to the debate of the filibuster in the Senate, right? We need to protect uh, minority voices and minority rights to speak out against what can be- very, very quickly become a tyrannical mob. Right. Um, so his new book is out, Adam Brandon, who's our president, and then, of course, John Tanmey's book, When Politicians Panicked, which focuses on the COVID pandemic. Um, you can find all of that at freedomworks.org. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, just at freedomworks, all one word, where you can follow along with us there. Um, we put out a podcast every week called Pardon the Disruption, and we actually talked and dove into the Fauci email question and the one that aired two weeks ago, so you can check that out as well. Um, but just give us a, a follow if you're so inclined, and uh, please join the fight for freedom. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Sarah. And again, I always appreciate the work Freedom Works does. You guys are definitely leaders um, you know, in the liberty movement, and so I just really appreciate you taking time to talk with me today. Thanks, Christina. 